in the 1970s and 80s uh, there was a lot of forestry planting on the peatlands. The, the peatlands of the flow country um, for uh, a good couple of hundred years uh, have not really been hugely productive in, in, in terms of uh, what, what we uh, would normally expect to try and do with landscape. Um, so in the UK we tend to try and use landscape for industrial or farming uh, based practices. Uh, the peatlands are so wet and uh, so uh, devoid of uh, nutrients, calcium, uh, that they, they're very hard to graze livestock on or to grow any type of product. Um, but in the 1970s and 80s there was a big push, uh, partially because of government tax breaks, to try and plant uh, forestry um, plantations on them. Uh, and really there was no real thought in the, the commercial viability of these timber crops. A lot of it was to do with the actual tax break itself. So wealthy people that uh, wanted to try and get a tax break from the government would offset um, the, their, their uh, income elsewhere by planting these, these trees up here. Um, so part of the problem with that is the, the trees themselves, they uh, are all non-native, um, so they tend to be um, Sitka, uh, Spruce, or they tend to be Lodgepole Pine. Um, these trees uh, are um, naturally from the United States of America, so they're not uh, European trees that you would normally find. They uh, have a tendency to um, grow very shallow root plates, so they tend to be quite susceptible to wind throw. Um, they break up the, the peat, um, so the, the surface layers of peat, uh, their roots work their way down uh, into that surface layer and break it up. This exposes it and oxidises it and it tends to lead to it breaking up and deteriorating over time. So we get carbon loss through the deterioration of the peatland surface. Um, we also have problems with the, the drainage that's associated with these forestry blocks. So um, to try and get the ground into a condition to allow the trees to, to grow to some reasonable state and there's quite substantial drainage systems that are incorporated into them and they normally include um, furrows that flow downhill to a collector drain at the bottom and that normally then empties into a normal water system uh, so a burn or a river. Um, we get carbon loss through that so there's um, erosion of the, the peat through these water um, systems uh, and there's also drying out of the peat um, in the, the associated areas. So what the RSPB's uh, been doing in the area um, since uh, the sort of mid 90s when we first acquired the, the Forstnard Reserve is uh, to purchase areas of peatland that, um, that has not been damaged to protect it but also to look at restoring um, blanket bog um, areas. So taking areas that have been damaged and degraded through forestry uh, and, and restoring them back to active areas of, of blanket bog. And we do that firstly by removing um, standing forestry um, and we, we then look at blocking up the associated um, drainage system. So that includes furrow blocking, um, which um, stops water running off downhill into the collector drains, and then also blocking up the, the lower collector drains and preventing that, um, that from emptying into the water courses. And the reality of that is that by doing that, we also um, improve the water quality in the river systems as well. Um, so we're stopping um, sediment being washed down into the rivers. And this is a beneficial impact onto things like the, the salmon fishing uh, that, that we have in the local rivers uh, as well. In the past, um, it wasn't really financially viable to do a lot with the woody material that we were removing. So a lot of it was um, felled to waste. Uh, and this was basically felling uh, the trees, which normally aren't particularly large, into the furrows and then just leaving them to naturally deteriorate over time. The problem is that you're leaving um, material there which takes a, a quite a long time to, to deteriorate and the recovering of the peatland surface is a very slow process. Uh, most projects last maybe three, five, ten years. A lot of what we're talking about with peatland restoration is 25, 50, 100 years. It's quite a long-term project. Um, and a lot of that is down to the fact that peat development and sphagnum growth, which are both linked, um, it's, it's around about one millimetre a year. Um, so when you see peat depth of um, 10 metres, you're looking literally at thousands of years worth of peat development. 
but it means that um, when you're trying to um, recover the surface, um, you're, you're looking at quite a long time period for it to naturally do that. But by um, restoring the hydrology, getting the water level right after the forestry has been removed, you greatly um, sort of increase the chances of that happening successfully.